Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, uh. Dunes and Pros. Check out my IEM channel. I have a dedicated channel for just IEMs. I started re-reviewing some of the ones I had. And I'm reviewing all the new ones there, except for like ones I need to do here to tell you to get over there. Anyway, holy fuck. Okay, so dust things off. Um, this, before we talk about Holo and Rhea Scrimmery, and you don't have a fucking sticker? What is wrong with you? Um, this is the IFI Zen deck. And it slowly crawled up in price. It was 130 when it came out. Then the V2 came out. And then there was like a shortage. And the price went for like 150 and then 170 It is now $200. Inflation sucks dick. But at $200, it's still worth it. Like, who, who, raise your hand in the comments if you own a, a, a Zen deck. Well, V1 or V2 doesn't matter. Uh, MQA <coughs> and, um, you know, beautiful metal volume knob and true bass and high low gain, which is called power match and quarter inch, and then 4.4 Pentacon for balanced out balanced output combo, and then you get like a switch for fixed and variable outputs of your RCA and a balanced output and a USB and only is the only problem is the only USB only only problem is USB and only problem. What if I told you there was another? It's taken fucking forever for something to come out to compete with this. And here it is. This is the K7. And the reason Rhea Scrammery is here, because this is the K9. And this is the AKM one. I have two of these. I never sold them. Because Fio sends them out like, hey, you know what this? Hey, you want to try the ESS one or the AKM? Yeah, do it. And it should be just sold. One of them should be sold. But I never did because it's fucking leaps and bounds better than almost anything else Fio is making. And I just came off the Q7, the big portable that doesn't make any sense. And the M17 is the big portable that doesn't make any sense. But this is a desktop unit balanced out with the caps and the metal and the build quality and the... Ah! But it's a little bit unaffordable. I think it's I think it's 850, 750. It's, it's a lot. It's nearer to 1,000 than not. So this, I get this. I get the little K7 and I don't know the price because it's still not available. Amazon has it as currently unavailable. But they have the price, and it's two hundred dollars. It's the same price as that. So let's look into it. First question: I know you're all itching. Does it have MQA? No, no. I searched. I Control F. No MQA, or or they're not listing it on the Amazon page. No MQA. High and low gain, two gain stages. Has a pre-out selectable in the front, so that you can. Play your Yelly. That song at the beginning, by the way, was Yelly, a cause de garçon. It's French. Yelly, Y-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. You'll find it. And um, 4.4 Pentacon balanced out. True balanced. A true balanced uh, DAC. Let me see what DAC chips it uses, because you're all going to be like, I'm too lazy to click that link, Zeus. Read it to me like I need to be fed. Dual AKM AK4493SEQ DACs. And using a THX AAA 788 plus amps. So, no MQA. THX, which can be dry, except this was the first example of THX not being dry. And then, so dual DAX. Uh, 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 and here's the thing that actually intrigued me. Because it says 1% total harmonic distortion plus noise balanced under, balanced up at 2 watts stable output power. Now, when you're talking about THX, usually it's like 0.00000% distortion. And that could be great. But when you are allowed, allowing yourself as a company to give yourself under 1%, but like you have to, you, not to the thousands, that means you're coloring this out. That means you're doing something that's it's not measuring as good as it possibly could be. And you know what? Fuck it. I'm okay with that. Because class I amps and, and tubes and the things that I like that are fun, they require a little bit of a funk. Oh, just put it in there. Just, just shove it under a dumpster. Take it out. Is it still edible? Probably. So I don't care how this measures. I care how this sounds. And I pulled out some big boys. 909s, and I have the new Aria here with the, uh, the what is this, Edition S or the new S driver. I don't know. Someone sent me their new Aria because, like, hey, have you heard this new Aria? And I'm like, no. So I, let me unplug the very, very, very nice Zen Pros, which don't forget, oh, there's a roll of toilet paper here. 
for, I cry a lot. I don't know what you want from me. Um, I am's noise floor. Mute. Pause the song. Digital inputs. Nearly no noise floor. On low, I can't detect anything with those IMs, no matter how high or low turn the volume knob. On high gain, it goes. You hear the noise coming out of my face? It's like barely there. However, this has a line input as well. So I've got a Gashelli Labs DAC down there doing things, but it's a it's a, it's a it's a weird DAC, so the noise floor is a little bit higher on it. Um, and that's when you could pick up on it. But then again, I plug this into it with the thing, and this has no noise floor. That's coming into the balance side, so maybe the RCA side is noisy. I don't know. That's why this is going to sell more than that. You follow me, boys? We have got our RCA line out or pre out. So pre out here, then pre for the back RCA's out. The only problem is I got to be real careful because if I flip this switch up one more time and this is going to be a problem. This is the only problem with this unit so far, other than the laggy volume. We'll get to that. Is that if you go up one more time, how quiet is this song? It's real quiet. I'll demonstrate it. So here's the opening of the song. Okay, it's a long horn. It's a very quiet long horn. But if you accidentally went like this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord Almighty, no. Line out is one switch up further. Now there's that little bit of delay. They've built in the delays. The feel's been very good with this of late. They just give you like a, all right, I'm going to fade in now. So you don't have a chance to react. If you fuck up and flip that to line out instead of pre out or pre, and then phones out, I guess PL was phones out, if you really want to not get confused. Th that's the thing. The high low gain does not affect that output. So that does its thing no matter what the high low gain is doing. That's just for the fronts. Um, yeah, no, we have digital inputs. We have USB like this and then fiber optic and coax to digital. Yes. It's got an external power brick, which is plugged down there, which is 12 volts, which means you could run this in your car if you really wanted to. And then you have your two sets of RCAs. This is coming from an external source. This is coming from Gashelli DAC, which by the way, that noise floor doesn't matter because on those IMs, I still had to be up way louder than I'd ever play it to hear the noise floor, but it was it was mm, it was rough. And then here's your outputs for the speakers. And that's it. There's no nothing on the bottom but fingerprints, nothing on the side but fingerprints, nothing on the top but holo, giving me the finger, but this sort of finger, not this sort of finger. Um, you'll notice there's an RGB ring around the thing. You don't you didn't see it being RGB? Hold on a second, I'll switch from coax to the line. All the colors of the rainbow that will switch to optical. Ooh, so many pretty colors. You don't get to control what color that is. That is based on the sample rate of the music you're playing, which if you're playing through fiber optic or coax digital like I like to, it's very, very limited. You're going to get like two different colors. I've seen yellow and I've seen blue. Um, if you plugged it in USB, which is annoying for me to have to like tell that old computer that's running Windows 7 still to like, hey, install drivers for this. And it's like, no. I'm old. Fuck off. So I'm not testing with USB. But if you did, you could go there. There's no app. I was expecting the FIO control app to like connect to this and then like adjust that color because I'd want it to be purple, obviously. But I don't mind the colors that it is. Um, tour of the unit. I guess I toured the back already. Input button here for inputs. There is a delay here. Hold on. I'll put it back on the speakers. That song's ending. Give it a second. This song has an intro. Give it a second. Switch. Switch. And then switch to USB where there is none, but it keeps playing for a second and then it off and then rises back up. Don't hate that. Don't hate that because if you fuck up, you can just go back around and it'll go back to if I'm like on optical and it's playing post mono jukebox. And I go one, two, three, four. Nothing changed. Because it doesn't immediately change. You have the time to go around, which is kind of nice. I'm sure I'm going to get a copyright for that. Fuck. Um, 
How, what are we testing? The DAC, like, so here's the thing. Um, the DAC in this is balanced, but the only input analog is RCA, so it's unbalanced. So there is an actual difference, I feel, between the external input and the internal input, or the digital input. So no matter how much I like the Gashelli Labs DAC that's down there, it's at a disadvantage because there's two AKM DACs in here. So I've been leaving it on an optical or a coaxial, coaxial, which does the little thing. It's so pretty when it does it. And I've been testing with everything under this. It's actually started with uh, these. I had the Rhodes out because I was using them in a Bluetooth comparison. I just need to plug them into something. So I was just like, ah, let's plug in these Rode NHT 100s. Oh, I should probably switch that down to phones out. And I, I granted, these sound great on everything. If you don't know about these headphones, please go find my review of these headphones. They have locking slides. Look, the slides lock, so they can't slide. And the wire switch. Oh, they got cooling gel pads. Ah. Oh. And I'm like, God, these sound great. And I was like, well, I wonder if it's the amp doing it or the headphones. So I pull out the most difficult to fucking amplifier headphones. 909s hate to be alive. They, I mean, it's really some Japanese level imperialism. It's just like, I do not want to be here. And then they don't work unless you find the perfect amplifier. And FIA was sort of snuck in in there with that THX tech and whatever they're doing to it to make it less dry. And it works on like FIOs, on like, on like Fostec stuff. It's fucking crazy. By the way, Zeos, link to the Mocha Loop video that she's from. Because that artist, I support him. He's not Japanese, and he hand draws all these crazy animations, like Disney old school drawing. I could listen to this. These are listenable. They don't hurt. They're not overly sharp. They're not. They're not hard to drive. This is two watts. I haven't put on any headphone that requires me to switch to high gain. And I'm like, I keep looking around, like, well, do I want to pull that down and try? It's only two watts. But uh, I guess we should talk about. Real quick how it sounds, because you're probably not going to watch past this part of the video. It's competing with the IFI Zendak. I brought that fucker out. I put the I put the holo sticker on it before the video even started. Like, assessment done. This. Whatever they do with THX, VO's got that shit down. And they got it down for 200 bucks. The only other thing I have coming out that I'm interested in is, look at this little guy. I got a little topping DX1. It's so cute. It's only USB in, and the high low gain switches on the back. But it's like it's the littlest, smallest little, little no balance output either. Wee. So we'll get to that. I'll have to plug that thing in and see if it makes the go. Um, and I have to check the price on that too. But so now we're at the two hundred dollar mark, and we're looking at the IFI versus this. You don't get a ba you get a true bass on this, which everyone knows is literally crack for music. But you know what else is crack for music? Just THX amplification from Fio, sounding like a little baby version of this for two hundred dollars is crack um the biggest problem i have besides the previously mentioned problem is there's a lag to the volume and i don't know if they can fix this with firmware i'm actually going to switch out to the i have no idea where this cable came from by the way uh, i was asking my patrons if you're a ten dollar supporter of this channel on patreon or subscribe so you get into a patronage chat where apparently you're there for me to pick your brains because i'm like hey where'd this cable come from with a really sharp connector like this is the, it's so fucking sharp. It could kill you. But I'm like, it's a 4.4 and it goes to 3.5 and it's way better than the stock cable that came with those Arias. So I'm going to use those. So if you can tell me where this cable came from, I'm sure one of you out there is like, excuse me, I'm a VOS expert. Yeah, I, I I love this cable, but I hate this thing. Um, headphones playing. If I switch back to speakers on White Zombie. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to go to an actual track that won't get me pulled off the internet oh shit this is not sorted uh who does that that collection of sounds p p pounding percussion and shit We've got like ten thousand of them it's definitely not gashafelstein i wonder if bach will get me pulled off the internet lindsey sterling here hold on let's switch it all right so this is probably gonna screw me up doesn't matter Run pre out, not line out. Line out would just be immediately play those speakers as loud as possible. Go. Um, we don't want that. Run pre out. And the headphones can stay plugged in because as soon as you switch from, from phones out to pre out, the headphones don't work. On the IFI, 
the headphone out in the front and the line and the pre outs on the back or well it could be pre out or line out fixed or variable which is okay for the switch to be in the back because it's something you're only going to switch once the fact that it's on the front and is the next step is bad that's bad bad fio bad design fio that should be a switch in the back just like this is a switch in the back however these play all the time and these play all the time and you can't switch so if you want to listen to your speakers and not your headphones you have to unplug your headphones and if you want to listen to your speakers if you want to listen to your headphones and not your speakers you have to basically power off your speakers that is a major fucking design flaw ifi where this literally goes i'm listening to speakers click i'm listening to headphones click those are off listen to speakers it also does that did you see that where i flipped from headphones to speakers and it sort of played for a second muted and then came up it's like you're, you're trying to do a nice thing and you fuck it up every once in a while it's not all the time where you go back headphones wait Uh, it's like, uh. all right. Of monsters and men from the Hunger Games. Oh, I feel it's gonna be bad. Anyway, I'm gonna try to demonstrate singles samples, 24-bit samples. Here we go. This one got us copyright infringed. All right. This is a digital knob. This is an analog knob. It's very smooth. I love turning that knob. And this is knob is also smooth, not as heavy. The, the knob itself isn't as nice as the IFIs, but it's digital. And that's a two-part thing. It's a win and a lose. It's a win because no matter how low you play it, it's always balanced. You always have the same amount in the left and right. It doesn't you know have a it doesn't get dirty and you have to wiggle it back and forth you're never playing really quiet and it's like only in the left channel and you turn it up and it starts bouncing so it, that's good digital is good problem is it's non it's like a logarithmic gain um i learned that phrase by the way there's your off by the way in case you're wondering it's not on the back it's literally the knob turns all the way down and then goes click and then it's off and if you're using USB, that'd be a problem, but we're using coaxial or fiber optics, so you just turn it on. It does the swooly swool, and then it's playing again. That leaves a lot of dead zone here. Speaker out is currently on. Don't hear it. Okay, I'm starting to hear music. So this entire area here is basically useless. It's good. There's a buffer zone. If you want to lower your volume down all the way but not shut off the unit, you can just go boom, and you, you hit a stop. But if you go past it, it'll go click. But all the way down here is nothing. So then you get like your music you're you're going through up here. Go back to jazz harmonics. So now you start getting to the listenable volume at noon. The problem is from noon to one to two to three is so loud and oh my god. So from noon to three is like the all the volume. It might as well be 10% to 80%. It's just like, blah. And then above that is like just too much power, usually for headphones and speakers alike. So this thing, man, this thing, other than that slight volume lag, like it's annoying when I turn something, it isn't just turning up the volume. But I think probably for the cost, they had to cut the processing power down on it. And it honestly sounds so good. Out of those are Mackie MR624s, by the way. Um, uh, give me some left and right elephant. Channel check. Channel. Good, yes. Sweep on the right channel. No one's deaf. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is the first competitive product for the IFI Zendak. I just came into reality in this in this video. I was I actually did like one of these once I started like understanding how good it sounds because I Mozart violin concerto in D. This is a twenty four bit sample, so it's now a piss yellow. It's not quite green. It's like lime green. 
Yeah, no, this is as good as this is as good as you need on a desk for two hundred dollars. This is a good. I hate saying words like this because this, this is reminiscent of old Zeos. Old Zeos in the old apartment when he first moved in, he wasn't getting expensive items. Now that I have like thousands and thousands of dollars and shit, just like got the bursting amp just sitting on the table back there, it's like I could be very happy, like a regular human being, with just this. It would only not be powering the most expensive or hard to drive. Like Argons, if you had them balanced, maybe, maybe Argons would run on this. I mean, I like Argons on literally a fucking speaker amp. So that's 100 watts or 50 watts. So God, it's, yeah, this is, this, is, this is the first amp to compete with the IFI. It doesn't have your bass boost, but it's got digital inputs of coaxial and fiber optic. It has the same line-out capabilities, only this has a balanced out and this doesn't. But you need to get a 4.4 adapter to do it, so it's going to cost you money to buy or build that anyway. And it'll probably fit on most people's desks better than that. And and you can power it externally, even though you can power this externally, although it will run on the USB cable, if you're, which you have to run it on USB because that's the only input. So it's finally... i got to give this thing a sticker now. I've been stickerizing all the things I really love, and I know I love the IFI Zendak. It's just been sitting there waiting, and holo now. Anyway, I'm done. Uh, huge thanks. By the way, There's a, this THX and high-res audio thing is a placard, like a lacquer placard on the front. So you can move your sticker of your waifu over it if you feel like it. Although I don't mind seeing the THX logo. It's actually something to be revered nowadays. But I don't like the high-res audio, because, yeah, fucking no shit. Um, I could review these Arias on this and I'd have no no issue it's like oh but why don't you use a $1700 fucking DAC which is, I don't you don't need it 200 bucks out the door run your Arias and then go home click wallpaper in the description Patreon subscribe star please help support this channel I've got lots of projects going on I've got new channels being launched um I don't want to say I'm going to hire an editor because that person would lose their mind and kill themselves. I don't want to be responsible for that. Could you imagine trying to edit me? When is my mouth not giving out pure gold? Um, yeah, so wallpaper, including the artist's uh, link in the description, is rare, but I this person like makes music videos that are awesome. Um, links to all the shit on here. Links to the competition there. Uh, I don't. I won't link to this until I know if it's any good. The little topping. It's just just enough space for a waifu. Um, yeah. Everything's great. Uh, check out the IM channel. That's launched. We're at like 3,200 subscribers, which is not bad considering. And I'm actually, those videos are easy to make because I don't talk for this long. So it's like 10 minutes, bang, done, move on. Thumbnail picture right here, next one. And I try not to do links. And I have sponsors in there too, so check out the sponsor links on that channel. And yeah, we're done. Fio. It's about time you had a win. I guess it was worth the, the Q7 and the M17 being slight failures to have this. Because whenever they were fine for that, they stripped out all the bullshit, give you this, and it's fucking amazing.